When doing SP2 collision repair and refinishing safety, in general, automotive repair safety, either of these, you'll find that as you get into them, there, there is some repetition within them and they are fairly close. Collision safety will have some components that general automotive safety won't and vice versa. When clicking on those, you'll find that there is this left menu tab that has the vast majority of information that you're going to need to know. Um, both start with safety data sheets and hazard communication standards. In general purposes, every automotive business, whether it's collision safety or general safety or, or any, or most businesses for that matter, should have safety data sheets. It is a good idea, though time consuming, to familiarize yourself with those data sheets at whatever business you're working at. Uh, the time to figure out what to do in an emergency is not during the emergency, it's prior to the emergency. You don't want to figure out what to do when you have something in your eyes, when you have something in your eyes. So the things that you commonly work with, you probably should take a look at those safety sheets and figure out what to do in an emergency. Also, personal protective, protective equipment. That's going to include, for most auto shops, the general things such as eye protection, hearing protection, respiratory protection, and skin protection. What type of gloves to use with everything first aid kits, what they should be established with, and more importantly than anything else, their locations. The same thing with eye wash stations. You're going to want to know where they are, if they've been serviced recently, and uh, you know, which, which if, depending upon what you get in your eyes, if you use the eye wash station, and in some cases you may not. Fires, uh, inspecting those fire, those fire extinguishers on a regular basis, knowing where those fire extinguishers are, whether they're multiple A, B, C type, or maybe just A type in some businesses. Power tools, all the specific safety equipment that can be involved in those, making sure that things like the grinder, making sure the, uh, the safety shields are on those, and, and all the safety components are in good shape. Electrical. Uh, extension cords are one of the biggest offenders there. Extension cords became become frayed, they become broken, especially at the tips, and, and employers have a tendency not to replace those, even though they're really cheap. It's not a matter of them being nefarious in their intent, they just overlook them from time to time. Jump-starting vehicles, uh, making sure that uh, you know the, the jump-starting uh, rules for the specific vehicle you're working on. Most vehicles have 12 volts, but a lot of them have uh, hybrids, have uh, 144 volt, 360 volt, high voltage things. So you really need to look up how to jump start the vehicle that you're working on particularly. Uh, and then also the whole gamut of hybrid vehicle safety. Uh, the voltage and amperage that's present in hybrid vehicles uh, are as fatal or has the potential to be more fatal than regular commercial house and uh, commercial electricity. Compressed natural gas, though you don't see them very often in a regular automotive shop, it is, it is nice to know uh, that there are some special safety concerns regarding that. Lockout tagout, one of the probably most overlooked safety items in the repair shop, is that when a piece of equipment has failed but has not yet been uh, repaired, is to notify those who come behind you that there's a problem. Locking off the breaker to the piece of equipment, locking out the controls to it, and placing good signage to let anybody that know that goes behind you that there is a problem that exists with this piece of equipment and it has not yet been repaired. Walking and work surfaces, making sure that all grease, oil, fluids, coolant have been properly and uh, properly cleaned up and make, making sure that those walking surfaces are safe and no one's slipping. Uh, there's, of course, avoiding injury in the workplace. That's more of a, uh, a theory on how you conduct your business. Bloodborne pathogens, obviously, you're not really at any risk of your own bloodborne pathogens because they're yours. But if a coworker gets injured, bloodborne, fluid borne pathogens is good to know about. How to protect yourself when rendering uh, first aid to those around you. Respiratory and air quality, making sure that exhaust gases are removed from your shop, that you have respiratory protection on for, for the 
the proper respiratory pr uh, protection on for what you are actually being exposed to at the time. Those little cotton or paper dust or particulate matter masks aren't necessarily the the proper respiratory protection for everything that you may come in contact with, especially in a, a body shop environment. Operating vehicles, uh, general general operations on how to operate them around a shop safely, not the roadway. Well, the roadway is important too, but how to get around a shop and making sure that you're not running into things and or people. All the automotive lifts, lift safety is incredibly important as is welding. All of these components are the basic functional purposes uh, of the safety program. It's an important issue to know that not only is the manager trained, but every single employee that enters that workspace during a workday. It's not a safe environment for customers or vendors to be involved in because they haven't had the professional safety and environmental training that you've had. So that's what's, in, that's what's encompassed in both the collision repair and refinish safety and the general automotive safety program.